Who are you? We beings from your future are using every method we can devise to bring you into focus and answer this question. We want to know you, to see your face, even to experience the world through your senses. We measure you. We generate long chains of words and numbers in our effort to understand you. When you're a kid and you're interested in something, you do art about it. So I was interested in fossils and dinosaurs. It still makes sense to do that as an adult. You study something, it's very exciting. You may publish about it, you may do scientific work, but somehow that's not quite enough. And to actually give vent to some of the aesthetic feelings that come from the field, which are rich in this case, you have to venture into the realm of art, I think. My name is John Gerchi. I'm a paleo artist. My new book is called Shaping Humanity. It's about telling the human evolutionary story with art, especially sculpture, and it focuses mostly on the Smithsonian project. I did 15 sculptures for a new hall of human origins there. And at first I thought it was gonna be sort of a nuts and bolts book about how you reconstruct human ancestors, a little bit about the human evolutionary story and how we chose poses that would match the adaptive character of each species, but it really turned into much more than that because as I was writing, some riskier, maybe weirder stuff crept into the writing, and it was about um, the kind of connection that making art like this or seeing art like this allows you to make, a connection with human ancestors, and that became a, sort of a recurrent theme in the book when you hold an ancient tool in your hand or look at an ancient skull, feeling a connection to these long ago ancestors that only had some of the things we consider human and not others. It's a powerful, powerful thing. And this doing this kind of art allows you to make that connection in a big way. The U.S. Postal Service asked me to do this project, uh, working on art for four postal stamps. They usually do art that's five times the size of the stamp, and then they shrink it down. And I said I wanted to do it one and a half times the size. So um, it's very, very slightly larger than the stamps uh, themselves, and they're very, very tiny little pieces of art. Um, but I used very small brushes, and it all came out very well, I think. I did some work for Jurassic Park, the movie. They actually wanted me to develop the dinosaurs more as characters to the extent that I could. The humans are being stalked by the velociraptors inside the visitor center, and in one case, they're coming through a library shelf scattering books. I had always seen velociraptors as this kind of foul-smelling, evil chickens with switchblades, you know? Nasty creatures that you don't want to run into. And that was when we only knew about small ones. Um, but, uh, so everything I did was pretty much in that character. My first job for National Geographic had a sort of charmed existence. It was amazing because I went to them and they, the art director said, we're doing something on the march of extinction, but we're not sure what we want to do. Which I love to hear because uh, I have a lot of ideas. Um, so I get to sort of experiment with mine if they don't know yet. Um, so I said, well, there's this painting I've always wanted to do. And um, I sort of scribbled it out and described it. And he said, do a drawing of that. And I did a drawing. He said, fantastic, paint it. I painted it. There were no changes. It was done initially for a poster insert. I got a call one day saying it had made the cover. And then it went on to win a gold medal at the Society of Illustrators and other awards. So it was like I just a charmed existence and I thought working for National Geographic is really really fun but um, none of the other projects I've done for, done for them have been as easy since. The Museum of the Earth wanted to do a display of my work and it's the most comprehensive display that's ever been done. So they asked me to dig deep into the archives and I have some pretty deep archives so I had stuff I had done in first grade. Part of the process of reconstructing a human ancestor is really that you get to discover an identity. 
you're building this thing based on numbers that you've generated, based on dissections and so forth, study of the fossils. But all of those, the cumulative result of all of those decisions gives you a face to look at. It's really the way we humans use faces um, as kind of identity markers. And it's really like you're discovering who this, who this person is. And that's very uh, exciting. I want to create figures that are both aesthetically compelling and are scientifically based on the best science you can uh, currently get and make sure that it's something that is going to move people.